All right, all right. Let's see if this is working on all the platforms. Everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start off with a song. Good morning, everybody. Can't see. People are saying can't see. I I, I can't go into the normal uh, chat because I will lose my mind if people start trolling me and saying they can't see anything. You don't look as tall when you're sitting. That thank you, Timber Music. I can see, I can see fine. Holy shit, YouTube gave me a notification. Yeah, I set this one up well today. I, I planned it out. I did a little, uh, I scheduled the next stream. I did all kinds of stuff. So let's kick off today with a nice, <laughs> a nice little video of, of some great harmonica work with me and my son. Check this out. <laughs> So that was a good time. I was just seeing if uh, if everything was working, if it was pixelated or whatnot. How's the picture on? Is the picture okay? Picture good. All right. So let's talk. It's good to see you guys. All right. There are already 350 people here. I was just running some numbers yesterday. Do you guys understand how many downloads and, and listens we now get on the live stream? The Bears. The unbearable live stream, a million a month. Oof, that's like mind blowing to me. I never thought that was that was possible. A million a month and growing. Oh, this is just silly and stupid and funny. But my wife was in bed. We we're in bed last night, just uh, just poking each other and giggling. And she was on Snapchat. I don't even do Snapchat. I don't even have. I have an account, but I never go on it. And she saw this uh, this monkey video and it made me laugh. So I just want to show it to you guys. Apparently, this is like a real problem in India. It's like a bunch of monkeys are just being total dicks. Check this out. Wow, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> I uh the one that was on the one that was uh on Snapchat was actually funnier. Cause there's this one dude who goes up to the monkey and gives him the f finger and the monkey just knocks him over. I thought that was really funny. Oh, and if you want to super chat me, you can do it on uh, Facebook or, or, I mean, you could do it on YouTube or you can do it paypal.me slash feed the bear. I, you could do it anytime. I, I got a bunch that I'm going to read in a second here. It's pretty cool. You can just send me a message and uh, tip a bear, you know, throw some honey in the bear's jar. Oh, there's been a there's been a dramatic turn in the case for my stolen bike from 1989. 
as everyone knows, a black man stole my bike when I was a child. And uh, I've been looking for it ever since. We have a clue. Jalen Moore. Apparently his, his yearbook quote was, I asked God for a bike, but I know God doesn't work that way, so I stole a bike and asked God for forgiveness. I think uh, the case is close to being solved. I, I, I'm not going to say it was Jalen Moore because I, I don't recognize this man. He wasn't wearing a bow tie when he stole my bike. But he seems almost proud of it. And, and the thing about Jalen Moore is he's, he's funny. He's clearly funny. So at this point, I'd almost be ready to forgive. But not yet. Speaking of black people... I saw this and I thought it was wrong and weird and dystopian and creepy for so many reasons. Let's, uh, let's take a quick look. It's called Black People Meet. See photos of black symbols nearby. Well, does anyone else find it weird that the women are really white looking? I think, I think at this point we're following the, uh, the old single drop rule where if you have one drop of black you're black they used to use that against the blacks and now it's 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 working in the favor of um black men who want to date <clears throat> light-skinned women but still uh be cool in the black community apparently but the the deeper problem in my opinion and it's not a problem you can associate with anybody you want but it's just like like, okay, so I, I was kind of making fun of this on Instagram saying, okay, so now, so now progress is associated with self-segregation based on race. And someone was talking about J-Date, and I'm like, that's not even close. Like Christian Mingle and J-Date, that's based on an ideology or a religion. You know, it's based on value system. It's not just based on how dark your skin is. I mean, the closest to a white version of that is uh, farmers only, but there are black farmers. I think uh, it's pretty funny to think about the black farmer that's like, Fa you don't have to be lonely at farmersonly.com. And he's like, I'm a farmer. I'm going to go find a farmer. And it's like, he's the one black dude in farmers only and farmers only people are like, hey man, what's going on with the black farmer? <laughs> is it only farmers like what if it's like a, a farmer adjacent job like what if you are what if you help dig the like the muck trenches is that considered farming what if you like drive the truck that brings the produce to market can you date at farmersonly.com i don't think farmersonly.com is racially specific i think it's about I think it's just about being rural. I understand uh, uh, grinders just for gays. And that's a distinction that makes sense to me because it's like, okay, if you're a dude who likes dudes, this is your spot. It's like Tinder. If you're, if you're a youngin that uh, doesn't want commitment and you just want like real quick sex, this is your spot. But, but black singles, black people meet, I mean, I don't get why people would want to segregate themselves by race like that. I did a post that uh, on Facebook where I said the alt-right is like leftism for white people. And I had some interesting conversations like this one dude. The one thing about alt-right guys that I find hilarious is they, they act like they like, like me and hate me simultaneously and they're real up and down. Like this one guy was like, Says the guy who moved to an all-white town to raise his family. And I'm like, well, my brother lived here and uh, white lefties are real annoying. They're kind of ruining the, the whole experience. It's not about color of skin. It has to do with culture, you know. And he's like, man, you know, it, like the way these dudes talk is like, yeah, you're a total coward. And you're like, what? And it's like, no, no, a lot of respect for you. And you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? This one dude was like... We'll talk to this one guy about what alt-right means. Have him on your stream. And I'm like, well, maybe. I'd talk to anybody. You know, I'm down. I'm, I'm down to talk to people on my stream. It's like, oh, he's already talking shit about you now. 
I'm like, well, then now I'm not. I'm not one of those dudes that encourages shit talking. It's like if someone talks shit about me that I don't know, it doesn't make me want to talk to them at all. In fact, it makes me um, want to distance myself from them. And not because I'm a quote unquote coward, but because that's a, uh, I don't have respect for people that do that. Especially when they're not right, when they get things wrong, you know? Some people like that. Some people enjoy the chaos. I don't. I can endure the chaos and I'm comfortable in chaos when I'm trying to learn something or fight something, but I don't just enjoy people that are insane. I find it um, a waste of time. Like there's a, you know, you get it. So this is something I wanted to bring up attention to people. This is this guy, Josh Denny wrote something normal and makes sense. Kind of funny. Straight white males become this century's N word. It's used to offend and diminish the recipient based on assumption and bias. No difference in the usage. Yeah. I mean, it's not laugh out loud, funny. It's something to think about. I don't know if it's necessarily true, but it's, um, It's a good thought. I mean, straight white male is definitely a put down. It's definitely a pejorative at this point. But this is what ensued. And I've been talking to Josh. It's a good dude. Got to support. Got to support him. Dictionary.com jumps in and says, The N-word is considered the most offensive word in the English language. Quote, unquote, quote, straight white male is dot, 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 not. Okay, what N-word are you talking about, Dictionary.com? Is it not? Because not's an N-word. Be more specific. You know? Because as far as N-words go, I well, even, just start with words. N-word is considered the most offensive word in the English language. I consider pedophilia, rape, genocide. I mean, th- those things are all more offensive than nigger. Obviously. Nigger's a put-down. Pedophilia is having sex with children. Genocide is killing off an entire group of people based on their ethnicity or, uh, or belief system. I mean, that's so much more offensive. It, but see, then I started thinking, you know, rape, pedophilia, and genocide is kind of what, the, what fuels Hollywood and, and D.C. So I see why they're not offended by that. They're more offended by a word used in movies and music constantly. She ain't... I ain't saying she's a a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke niggers. I mean, how, so that's more offensive than, than this. Look at that. I'd like to thank everyone who came to show their support. Sorry we didn't have enough signs for everyone. We want, we weren't expecting so many supporters. LGBTP, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and pedosexual. Equality and acceptance. Yeah, that's infinitely more offensive. I'll give you another N-word that's more offensive than nigger. Necrophiliac. Necrophilia. That means the the sex with uh, dead bodies. So when they say the N-word, I would think that necrophilia is more offensive at a dinner party. Simply because that's... Take, like, when one of your loved ones dies and some some, uh, grounds taker... Probably on FarmersOnly.com, who didn't get any hits that day, digs up your 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 dead grandmother and uh, and violently has sex with her dead body, her corpse. That's an N word. That's called necrophilia. So, according to Dictionary.com, necrophilia is less offensive than a pejorative that's been used for centuries. Just about black people that's associated with slavery, which was a race-based indentured servitude system that's been abolished since 1862 or three or some shit. Then fucking a dead person. So dictionary.com is clearly insane. I so we we went ahead. Somebody on Facebook sent me uh Oh, by the way, Josh Denny's getting tons of death threats now, just like I went through. And that's why I'm all about supporting fellow soldiers, fellow gorillas in the mist, in the midst, in the midst, gorillas in the midst. So Josh Denny, 
I told him that I would support him 100% as long as he didn't apologize. Then I will join in on the death threats because I seriously cannot handle any more of these people apologizing for things they know aren't true or aren't aren't right or like aren't wrong. It's it's wor- it's almost worse than being one of these leftists. It's like when people know they're not wrong and they apologize, it's it's wor- it's the worst of both worlds. Oh, this is really funny. And then I'll man caught having sex with feminist at beach. And it's just a dude banging a whale, like a literal whale in the blowhole. Uh, what the hell was I just going to show you guys? It was funny. Oh, I remember. Let me get this up. So obviously I looked up the, the N word at dictionary.com to see what they said exactly. And it is, it, it's becoming uh, religious, not becoming. It is religious. This is now a, a religion. Look at this. You look up nigger in dictionary.com and says the term nigger is now probably the most offensive word in English. Care to explain why? So it's not pedophile. Its degree of offensiveness has increased markedly in recent years. Why? Aren't we getting farther away from from, uh, slavery and Jim Crow? You know, black Americans have put together are the sixth or seventh, depending on how you measure wealth. It's either sixth or seventh wealthiest nation in the world. Okay, although it oh, oh and it, it was a big, uh, big word used by Gandhi. Anyway, although it has been used in a derogatory manner since at least the Revolutionary War. So why has it become so much more offensive lately? Hmm. The senses labeled extremely disparaging and offensive represent meanings that are deeply insulting. All they're doing is saying how insulting it is, but not why. I mean, I did a video, maybe I'll link it after it's called why the N word is so insulting or something like that on YouTube. It, it, that video all like keeps getting hits. Like it keeps getting put on blogs and stuff. I I think because it just keeps growing. It's one of those videos that, uh, I get alerted when people comment on videos sometimes and that one it's daily. People are, have something to say about that video. All right are used when the speaker deliberately wishes to cause great offense. Okay, so now they're they're assuming intent. So like when Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre are at the door, are they are they deliberately causing great offense? What if someone says the word nigger is is not a good word? Is that offense? And who cares about offense? You know, you know one of the most necessary things in teaching and learning is offense. You have to offend people to make them think. The process of thought requires offense. Yeah, that's true, by the way. You have to be able to feel uncomfortable in order to grow. All growth comes from stress. It is so profoundly offensive that a euphemism has developed for those occasions when the word itself must be discussed. It doesn't say why, though. It, it, in fact, this is uh, this, this is uh, almost like the beginning of a mystery. The senses labeled extremely disparaging. It, it, all they can do is describe what they want you to think about it. They won't say why. So this word's been around forever, ever. Revolutionary War, right? But only now has it become Voldemort. And why is that? I mean, we all know why. We all know why. And it's real, real creepy. All right, what else would you want to talk about before I start reading Super Chats? PayPal.me slash Feed the Bear or Super Chat Me on YouTube. Also, uh, for kicking off our first Unbearable News Network commercial, I want you, yes, you, whoever is listening to this or watching this, mostly listening, which is, we're on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, tons of other platforms. Shout out to Bayonet Bob for really expanding our audio downloads. 
but we don't have commercials and we don't have sponsorships. And that was on purpose. I've turned down quite a few, by the way, just FYI, because I don't want to be influenced by outside money, by outside power. And um, so the people that support the show at hugepianist.com slash subscribe or patreon.com slash WDTL or people that super chat or people that buy tickets to live shows or or flasks or mugs or anything like that, you're the reason that we keep going and expanding. And so thank you, because without that, we wouldn't be able to do this. But if you can't afford it or you just are like, nah, that's fine, too. All good. Fortunately, you have people that that do contribute and allow this to to go down. Because I think we can make a more honest show, a more fluid show, a more shoot from the hip show if we don't have to think about what advertisers want. And we don't at all, ever. Okay. What were we just talking about? Oh, this is interesting. So Donald Trump said, this is, this is almost old news at this point because the, the news cycle is now just as fast as, as you can possibly imagine because it's just, uh, it's just a way to hide truth. But uh, so Donald Trump said that, that MS-13 were animals. And so, of course, the mainstream media hijacked it. New York Times, all these people start saying that he was talking about undocumented my, uh, immigrants. Okay, first of all, undocumented immigrants are illegal immigrants. To begin with, they shouldn't be in this country. Illegal immigrants should not be in America because they're illegal. Whatever you think about it, it doesn't matter. I know illegal immigrants that I like, and I really hope they stay here and, and somehow get their green card because they're good dudes. But you have to have a rule of law or else laws don't matter. Your democracy doesn't matter. You're officially in a dictatorship or a monarchy if laws that you vote on don't matter. You vote on representatives that vote for you. That's how a, a republic works. It's not a direct democracy. It's a republic. We vote on representatives who then vote for us. It's already pretty far away from us at that point. So when they do pass laws, we need them to follow those laws. And secure borders are, are absolutely necessary in a country, especially when you have um, public works, when you have uh, roads and schools and hospitals paid for by tax money that will be used by people that don't pay taxes and are not part of the, the, the citizenry. And a lot of people will make it into a race situation, which of course it is not. It is not about race whatsoever, like not even a little. Not even a tiny amount. Because when Hispanic people are against illegal immigrants, they're treated exactly the same way as when white people are against illegal immigrants because they're called um, racist against themselves, which is, uh, doesn't make any sense to a normal person with a normal brain and a family who they love or a family who once loved them when they were children. But to absolute soulless morons... That makes a lot of sense. So like when Kanye West said, being black doesn't mean you have to vote Democrat. And he was then called racist. Uh, that makes sense to people with either a traumatic brain injury or who are not loved as children or who do not love their own families or who are at any point in time on the verge of um, suicide or murder. At this point, that's where I, I, I put a lot of these people because you can't think something so stupid and so destructive and so illogical unless you're absolutely infected with a brain disease. And way too many people bend over backwards. Like Josh, Josh Denny, this dude, who's now getting death threats. He's a comedian, by the way. And his point was fine. He even, he even said N-word. You know, Big Bear would not have said N-word. No, I don't say N-word. I'll only say N-word if I want a point made and not taken down. Like, I almost do it sarcastically. But uh, he's getting death threats, and a bunch of comedians are now supporting him secretly. Shh. They'll write him a little DM, just like they used to to me. And then eventually they won't be your friend anymore, by the way. Because uh, people have to either accept that they're cowards or 
start believing the lie. That's what happens to your brain. Your brain is still, it's still mush. It's still carbon. It's still flesh. It's flawed. It's still just an organ. And uh, it doesn't want cognitive dissonance like that. So they start off, the comedians will write to you and say, man, I respect, I respect you so much, Big Bear. You have so much balls, so much integrity. Uh, thank you for standing up for free speech, but never publicly. Sometimes publicly. Like, that's why I love the Impractical Joker guys and uh, a couple of these dudes that have been like openly on, on Tell Them Steve Dave, Quinn and, and Johnson and Brian Johnson, those guys have had my back. And it's not even ha having my back on my points. It's just the ability to make points. And we're losing it. Stephen Fry, a, a, a 60 year old gay British guy, was like, was like, this is the worst I've ever seen it. This is the German Stasi. So you know it's bad when a gay 60 year old German and or uh, British entertainer is like, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like that. He's he's been a poofter since it was illegal. Like he was poofing dudes in England when it was still illegal to be a poofter, and he thinks it's worse now because of the thought police. Because they use the gays. The LGBT, oh, they use those gays. And the gays are not happy about it. The poofters. And I'm starting to realize that, that it's pretty hard to discuss politics with any British or any European sometimes. Because in Europe, conservative means ethnostate. And in America, conservative means small government uh, individualism. Because Europe is so fucked and they have been for so long since world war one changed the face of the planet man i should do a whole episode just on world war one i've been doing some research on the fed too turns out it started in 1913 i was wrong i, I did a whole uh rant in one of my episodes about the fed printing money because of the depression and we had to just take that on the chin and our greed it started in 1913 a year before world war one and that's really really uh suspicious to me I'm going to have to do a lot more looking into this, but um, America right wing is not about like Europe's so fucked that their whole spectrum is just what type of authoritarianism. Do you want commies or Nazis in America? Unless you're retarded, that's basically the same thing. America has another option. Like I am a blood relative of Clark from Lewis and Clark, the, the famous explorers. We have a tradition of rugged individualism. Teddy Roosevelt, you know, like going way back, way, way back. The Wild West, manifest destiny. You know, just five acres and a fucking donkey or whatever that deal was. Uh, you know, my family came here as slaves in 1760. Well, one group. I mean, there's so many groups at this point. But uh, Irish indentured servitudes I are, are slaves, which is the same fucking thing. And... Uh, According to uh, the genetic profile, I'm Scandinavian, but I thought I was Irish, but I guess I'm so, I'm part Irish, but I think it was a lot of the Norman invasions and the Northern shit. My mom's mostly German. Doesn't matter. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about, but American right wing is more like I have a gun and a horse and you can't fucking get on my land. That's, that's American right wing. Right wing in, in Europe is like the only like people that look like exactly like us in this area. America is way more like, fuck you. I choose my friends. I choose my family. If you want my shit, you better try and fucking kill me. It's, it's a little different. It's like Europe, I think they just never had it. They haven't had freedom for so many thousands of years that they just don't even know it's possible. If they just have Stockholm syndrome, they're just looking at you like, but who is the king? Who do you pledge allegiance to and let... Ah, uh, poofta, your daughter. And America's like, I settled Louisiana. Get the fuck off. And then, of course, the stupid environmentalist idiots and the, the lefties are like, but the Native Americans. It's like, yeah, they were trying to scalp and kill motherfuckers. Don't you? Do people not realize that they did the same shit to each other? 
Oh, and uh, the whole like uh, intentional smallpox infection. You know that germ theory didn't exist yet, right? Like people didn't know how you got diseases. <laughs> so that's insane. It, it, it's that it's that easily proved wrong. That's why public school is so crazy, and that's why we're homeschooling. Because it's so told that it's like, oh, we have the the blankets were given to the natives to intentionally infect them with smallpox. If you look at a timeline, germ theory didn't happen till. Let's look it up right now. Um, oh man, I don't have a G. I got to copy and paste another G. I don't have a G on my on my computer. I don't know if you guys know about know that about me. And then I'll start reading the super chats and playing some music and all that stuff. Oh, I didn't even show you pictures yet of MS-13. Damn it. Germ theory. Germ theory. Germ theory. Germs theory. Jam theory. Uh, dude, this is it's so it's intentional. It's intentionally bullshit. Like like um, Wikipedia now is just it's just pages of nonsense, and you know it's nonsense. It's going back to to Greece now. No, the plague of Athens. The disease could spread from an infected person to others. That theory that isn't true. They thought they were using leeches. You fucking liars. Okay, forget that. It isn't true. All right. The work of Robert uh, Koch in 1880s. By the end of 1880s, the miasma theory was struggling to compete with the germ theory. Eventually, a golden era of bacteriology ensued. Yeah, it was was Robert Koch was the one with um, cholera, right? He discovered that the well was spreading cholera. I'm guessing a transitional period. German physician, founder of modern bacteriology, infectious disease, Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1905. He was public health. He, I'm, it was cholera, right? Just say cholera. Major contributions to field, growing bacteria, research, ice vein. It's just cholera. Co uh, Coke turned to cholera and began to conduct research in Egypt. Ah, uh, who gives a fuck? No one cares. <sighs> There was no germ theory. No one knew how anyone got diseases, so. Okay, so the New York Times said undocumented workers. And Trump was blatantly talking about the gang MS-13 when he referred to them as animals, right? Are they really animals? One of my first uh, UNN news stories is going to be, are MS-13 the new LGBT? This is what MS-13 looks like, by the way. This is MS-13. They're the most violent gang in the world, I believe. Uh, they're from El Salvador, and their uh, motto, their catchy motto is rape, control, murder. And they look like boogeymen from A Child's Nightmare, and they are absolute animals. Just, just absolute disgusting animals. And, uh, and all these articles were like, but... How can he call a human an animal? That's what they did right before the Holocaust. They would say that people were animals. Yeah, they also said that in... Uh, uh, <laughs> they also say, said that in, in the movie uh, Shawshank Redemption. When it's like, you gotta be a, a human being first to be gay. These queers that are gonna rape you, Dufresne, they're animals. They're not even human. And everyone's like, oh, <laughs> if someone rapes your kid, you're, you have a right to say that they're, they're animals. They're not human. It's like the left is setting up a white genocide. And I, I, I see it. I see it. it's clear as day, but it sounds a little alarmist. So I won't go down that road today. But the way they talk, I know for a fact that the left accuses everybody of what they are. Like uh, Schneiderman, Weinstein, all these guys who are these huge female activists, you know, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, all these people, 
they're like the worst rapey psychos on the planet. Like whatever they cute like that uh that Dyson guy from that debate that me and my mom recently just uh analyzed with with Jordan Peterson. He kept calling everyone racist and then kept talking about their race. Like like what they're saying about dehumanizing. Hillary Clinton called half the country deplorable and 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 that they're um, basically they can't be saved. They're beyond the pale. That's was almost the leader of the free world. She would, and no, no question, would be comfortable killing off Trump supporters. Just killing them. And Trump supporters are not defined by supporting Trump. A Trump supporter many times is nothing more than just a family-oriented, working person. It's that simple. Just people that are like, okay, when I pay less taxes, we get to go to Disney World. And when I pay more taxes, we don't. That's why the Democrats like single moms. Because single moms and uh, inner city poor people, many times made poor because of democratic policies, they like those people because when they, they, they when there's taxes don't affect them. Raising taxes, lowering taxes does not matter to these people because they don't pay taxes. They just receive money from the government. So uh, when Donald Trump lowers taxes, they freak out. They're like, oh, this is terrible. It's like, yeah, because you don't pay taxes. Us, we taxpayers do. And we have to support. And, and especially now that there's Twitter and the internet and stuff, we see that these people aren't really poor. They have Twitter accounts and Instagram accounts and Facebook accounts and all this time during the day to fight with comedians over hashtags on their smartphones, on their internet connections, on Twitter. They're not poor. They're, they're scumbags just leeching off other people's money. Oh no, did you just call them leeches? Yes. And it's not racial. There's white leeches, black leeches, gray leeches, yellow leeches. I have a dream today that all the leeches will stop leeching. And I don't think that they're deplorable, and I don't think that they're beyond saving. I think the worst thing you can do for a leech is give them a big fat leg full of blood. Because human beings don't have to be leeches. Leeches have to be leeches. You take away a leech's blood, they die. You take away a human being acting like a leech's blood, and they might have to learn how to grow their own food and hunt themselves, metaphorically. The black family wasn't destroyed until President Johnson. It wasn't, we weren't in this position before. Black crime was, was similar to white crime stats. That's why I'm not a racist. I would be a racist. If, if I thought it was right, I would be a racist. I have no, uh, I guess shame could be the word, but I have no um, hesitation whatsoever to say what I believe to be true. And I don't believe that there's that much of a racial element at all when it comes to any of these factors. I think it, it is about the government and what they put people in. It's all good. All right, let's read some of these babies. So these were some of the super chats from before. I have a dream today. All right, this was from, oh. Yeah, some of the stuff I just talked about were from some of these uh, Feed the Bear Super Chats. JP, yeah, this is the one thing that bummed me out about Peterson was that he, he was equating right wing with Nazis. I mean, don't get me wrong. Peterson's, I, I, I'm still debating naming my son Jordan. Like, that's how much I revere the man. But you can still criticize what you revere. You know? And I didn't like that he was, like when, uh, when Dyson who's named after a vacuum cleaner because they both suck when uh when he was like do you think the right has gone too far in certain ways and uh and he and he referenced charlottesville and nazis i'm like dude that's that's collect those are still collectivists that's why i was making fun of the alt the alt right because and don't get me wrong, I think the alt-right is better than the, the identitarian left because at least the alt-right was a reaction to that. I still think they're wrong. I still think you, you look at people as merit and, and culture and who they are as individuals. You can't look at groups as a collectivist. You know, you can look at probability. 
All right, JB is using the term right and left in traditional political context. Nazis, National Socialists, and Communists would regularly brawl in the streets in Germany during the 1930s. Extreme right in the political sense. Yeah, I know, but I think that that's wrong. Hang on. The right you're referring to seems more individualistic, libertarian, political inclination. Yeah, which is the actual right wing of America, dating back to the founding fathers. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Free speech. Right to bear arms. You know, these things are uh, are all libertarian concepts. It's not, like, that's why I don't understand that, that we're so upset. Well, I do understand. I know why we're obsessed with the 1930s and 40s is because you had two authoritarians fighting in the streets. And that is a great way to give idiots a full spectrum that does not include any freedom. Where you say you can either be a communist or a Nazi. They basically just... Different, different type of jackboot. Same exact mindset. Hey Owen, I was at the hunting le- uh, lease this weekend just hanging out with my son and shooting some video from my YouTube stream. I realized that I had never shot a deer at my feeder. I've shot many deer and they've always been in other directions and away from it. I got an idea. I stapled a gun free zone sign <laughs> on the tree next to the feeder to make the deer feel safer. I then took a 15 minute drive to the far side of the farm, and on the way back, I saw a deer at my feeder. It worked. My YouTube will probably get a strike against it, but who cares? Uh, could you give a shout out for my YouTube stream and ask the bears to subscribe? Of course. Thanks. Love what you do, uh, Big Bear. From 1911, 300 Wind Mag and Texas Redhead Bear. Yeah, so that I think that's your YouTube stream. 1911, 300 Wind Mag, Texas Redhead Bear. So try and find that. Stream and subscribe, because that sounds hilarious. The gun-free zone is amazing. This is from Neil. Owen, just watch the video with your mom where you talked about the Peterson and Dyson debate. You were right about Nazis being left-wing socialists, but right and left are no longer relevant terms. The real split now is authoritarian and libertarian. Dyson showed himself as an ignorant racist bigot pretending to be an intellectual. There was no debate. Peterson tried to put forth rational thoughts, and Dyson acted like an idiot. Dyson used large words to try and make himself look intelligent, but he used those words in nonsensical sentence structures that meant nothing. See you in Portland. Thanks, Neil. That was very nice of you. Also, I still think right and left is appropriate. I think the left is blatantly authoritarian, the right isn't. That's... And now, is there neocons? Yeah, those are Trotskyite Republicans that came up from fucking Argentina. Like the neocons are Trotskyite Marxists. You know, really look into where these people come from. They're smart fuckers and they know how to manipulate language. Neocon is not con. It's not conservative. Neoconservative, they took a word that's a great word and they made it shitty. This is from Charles. Hey there, what you're doing is amazing. Hope to be verified as Arizona or Bear for No to Mall. Yeah, be Arizona. Welcome, Arizona. Pronounced bear a normal. Oh, bear, dude, bear, be bear normal. That's real funny. Bear normal. Welcome, bear normal. Completely aware there's a vacation spot called Arizona. Also, completely open to you or anyone favoring one over the other. Thanks. Welcome, Arizona. And or you know, bear normal. Both great. Oh, and and make sure you register your bear names at our app, unbearableapp.com, and and use it. It's awesome. You can just talk to people. We're still working out bugs, but the more you use it, the more we see what bugs it is. Here's a, this is a long one, but I'll read the top because I wanted to uh, get her verified. Could I be verified as Doodle Bear? Yeah, welcome Doodle Bear. Yeah, and then uh, Doodle Bear talked about how bad that public school system blow blows, and I completely understand. This is from Joshua. Thank you, Joshua. Can you please play Carry On My Wayward Son for a family member who just passed away? I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, and I also got a message on Facebook from Josh, a different Josh, who said, Yesterday I lost my buddy who died as a, uh, a fisherman in a freak accident. He was a family man, 39, left two daughters. He wasn't just a... He wasn't just a bear. He was one of us as a family man. If you could mention him, that'd be great. He always fought for his family as you do. Yeah, that hit me pretty hard. So yeah, I, of course, I much love to your, to your friend. God bless and brutal, brutal, brutal stuff. But, you know, sounds like a great man in a great place. 
Uh, let me know if I can do anything to help. All right, so I'll, I'll get to wayward sign. Let's see what else we got here. I rub my face a lot when I have facial hair. All right, try this taking a second. I just had to prove that I'm not a robot. I am not a robot. Oh, and thanks to everyone who subscribes to the channel and does a monthly contribution because a lot of those came in this week and it was fucking awesome. So I appreciate that a ton. That was uh, that was big. That was big. Means a lot. All right. Roy Bear. Doing yard work. Had to wait for the dew to burn off, so I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to miss the live stream. I work midnights, and I'm looking forward to listening tonight at work. I love the book, the looks from my coworkers when I'm laughing my ass off, and they're clueless. That's awesome, Roy Bear. Cheryl. Oh, and last week you said you sang "Happy Birthday" to my 99-year-old grandmother. I clipped it, showed it to her, and she loved it. I've shown her twice, and my mom and sister were blown away. She keeps asking me about you because she has been telling her friends. You are such a blessing. Thank you so much. Oh, I love it. Thank you for doing that. Oh, there's Neil. I read Neil's. Jordan. Yeah. Just bought a ring to propose to my girlfriend. Thanks for being a shining light and showing us how to make a marriage partnership work. It's hard work, but it's so worth it. Just wanted to share the fun news. Genghis. Genghis Bear. Dude, she'll obviously say yes. I'd marry you, bro. You're that good at websites. Uh... UnbearableNewsNetwork.com is is was uh is run by Genghis Bear, Base Texan, Nimmer, all that. I'm a little behind on um making videos, but my parents were in town and we had a lot of family time. And uh, I'm gonna do that MS13 story tonight. And I'm I've been working on how to make my wife the weather girl. I want to make it constantly that she tells me the weather, and then I under my breath keep talking about how the Jews make the weather. <laughs> It just makes me laugh where it's like on Thursday, it's like, well, you know, if the Jews, if the Jews want sun, they'll be sun. If not, this is all nonsense. And you have been replaced by an app. I hope you know that. And then like over time, you realize that we're married because she's super pregnant. Dowie, it's good to see another dude from Oswego making it. I'm 39 and run a profitable small farm in New Hampshire. You should move here, dude. New York sucks. Wash off the tyranny. Oh, dude, I love, I love New Hampshire. We thought about that. But just because we're having a new baby, we're going to be near her family in Washington for a bit. But the way I think is I'm always looking, the whole nation is my neighborhood. I want to get a, I want to get a ranch in Texas. I want to start a compound in Arizona. I want to live, I want to also have a place in Oklahoma, Idaho, and Michigan. Zach. Hey, Big Bear. tie out hippie Republican Bear here. I'm wondering if you think I should watch the Peterson Dyson thing or spend my two hours doing something less aggravating. Just watch me and my mom break it down. It makes it funny. I've seen Dyson enough already that I know he is a hate-filled, race-baiting, intellectually dishonest asshole. Andrew Breitbart versus Dyson on Bill Maher showed just how disgusting Dyson is and how small Bill Maher's balls truly are. Bill Maher is a coward. Uh, refield performance. I have a spare keyboard. Want it? No, I'm cool, bud. I'm, I'm working it. I actually kind of, I've learned to enjoy the copy pasting of the G. It's fun. Makes me really think about what I'm writing. Good morning, Big Bear and Bears. Great chat with your mom the other day. Here's a little honey. Can I be Dakota Bear? Welcome, Dakota Bear. But uh, make sure you register at unbearableapp.com. Steve, my iPad won't let me send a super chat. Oh, well, it's all good, bro. I think the news cycle has ADHD. Second, nigger is far less offensive than the joke an actual misogynist said to me once, what is black and blue and hate sex? Since I'm not trying to offend anyone, I won't share the punchline, but I expect you can work it out. Calgary, Cal, Calgary bear necessity. Um, well, it's, it's funny that you said punchline. <laughs> I thought that was the punchline in a weird way. When you're like, I won't say the punchline, you're talking about a punchline. Punch, get it? Hi, Owen, you're the man, but I'd like to disagree on your take on cognitive dissonance. I love that. No problem with that at all, bro. As long as you know I am the man. I'm just kidding. Well, it is often a bad thing. It is also essential for nuanced thinking. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we disagree. All right, well, let me read yours and then I'll retort. Cognitive dissonance is about the discomfort of holding two contradictory ideas in your head simultaneously. The problem is unacknowledged cognitive dissonance. An example of productive cognitive dissonance would be agreeing with much of what Candace Owens says on an ideological level, but also acknowledging that she is playing identity politics from the right. Unacknowledged cognitive dissonance would be a devout Christian ignoring justifying Trump's moral failings. The negative cognitive dissonance is more prominent in today's vernacular as you see many people unable to consciously deal with their beliefs because they subconsciously want to be ideological consistent. I love what you said. And my only pushback would be this. Um, I don't, I think what you're referring to isn't really cognitive dissonance. I think that like you, you have different frames, like what, who you are as an individual versus who you are in different groups and your identity has frames. It doesn't change, but there's frames. Like, that's why like true perfect individuality is also not great because you still are like, I'm Owen, the son, Owen, the husband, Owen, the father, Owen, the American, Owen, you know what I'm saying? And so you have to know you, and then you go back and forth between group and individual group and individual. And that, and that is, is how you can have multiple, multiple thoughts on the same thing at the same time without it being dissonance. Like dissonance in music is this. If your thoughts are like that, it, it isn't good. It, it, okay, like for example, Candace Owens says on that she's playing identity politics. I see, I don't see that. <clears throat> I see what you're saying about Trump's moral failings. How, where you, where you see like, uh, I don't know. I really have to think about what you're saying. Where it's like, okay, you know someone's a hypocrite, but yet you believe them because you want to believe them and you don't acknowledge it. Versus if someone's like, yeah, maybe Trump's kind of full of shit, but at least he's pushing an agenda that we like would be acknowledging the cognitive dissonance versus saying he truly is a man of God. I personally don't know what he is. I don't know. Like those examples, I can't really wrap my brain around because I don't know enough about those two topics. Like I don't know what is in Trump's heart. And I can't think of what Candace Owens has said that is identity politics because she's not saying that being white is special or being black is special. She's saying being black doesn't mean you have to vote Democrat. And so... That to me doesn't cause cognitive dissonance. I do know what you mean though about like, because you do have several spheres of your brain where you have the, the emotional instinctive part and you have the logos and the logic, you know, you have the, the animal and you have the, the, the human and all that stuff. But I don't think that's cognitive dissonance. It, it's friction. It's, it's, it's the divide between chaos and order. It isn't the divide between two different orders. Like chaos and order, that divide is friction. There's friction there, but that isn't dissonance. Dissonance would be two orders. Like, um, I don't know anything about computer coding, but I'm sure there's like a binary language and another type of language. And if you try to uh, program a computer using both, the two orders will cause this. <laughs> But cognitive, but cognitive, uh, but, but chaos to order would be like. There's things that could potentially fit together that don't yet and you make it work versus things that are just noise like like that's dissonance order to chaos like chaos to order would be like
Like it starts off, but it's in the same realm. You couldn't do that like this. What's up? Yeah, I'll take some coffee, thanks. All right, Brian. Hey, Big Bear, I would like to officially verification as Brum Bear. Welcome. Listening to the Dyson debate was like listening to Damon Wayne's Anton Jackson character. I heard about that. Michael, Friendly Bear here. Haven't heard you verify me on a stream. Welcome, Friendly Bear. I'm working on an article for UNN. Awesome. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. Make it good. Hi, Alan. Do you still need a proofreader for your book? I've had so many offers that I'm just going to pick. I, I've, I've taken a little breather from it. I'm going to start sending that out to some of you guys that have offered just to see like what your takes are on it and if you can help out. But I've gotten so many offers that I almost kind of froze a little bit. I don't know who to pick or like. Kind of got put in a holding pattern. But um, maybe I should read more of that on this stream. I'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow tomorrow will be book day. It's from Ashley. I used to want to go into teaching psychology and conducting research in universities. I know universities are losing to the radical left and that the field of psychology is being consumed. But I feel guilty walking away from the training of those who will be responsible for the mental health of future gener generations. Oh, no. Walk away. Malanu talked about that. He was giving advice to someone recently about that, and it, it was awesome. It was, uh, now I'm going to read the Super Chats here on, on YouTube. But um, you can't beat academia. They're, they, they're locked in, but they're, they're, they're so locked in in their way of thinking that they're, gonna, they're losing from the market. Like, my show gets a million downloads a month. Like, being a psychology professor, you get, what, 50 kids a year? It's like, how do you really want to reach people? <clears throat> like, it, there's so many better ways. Like, the, the free market is eliminating academia's lock on leftist ideology, and that's how that's how markets work. It, it's not that's how that's how um, evolution works. That's how survival of the fittest works. It's like they're still gonna keep clamoring and screaming and flailing. You can't go into there and change their hood. That's their gang territory, but it's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. So what you do is you start your own thing that's a competitor and better. And so don't even think about wasting your time jumping through their hoops, getting accredited, getting a PhD, wasting your life to try and fight them on their terms. Um, it's like if they're like world-class fencers and it's all about fencing and you have to pay all this money to get the, the right fencing sword and you have to take all these classes and spend all this money and go into debt so that you can be a great fencer and when you fence them they have a slightly longer sword and they're really really good at fencing no just bring a gun and shoot them in the head be like i'm not gonna pick up your stupid fencing sword i own a i have an ar-15 if you agree to play by the rules of your enemy you've already lost that's probably in some Art of war shit. Set your own frame. Uh, three chord bear. My wife and I are excited to be at your Portland show. We'd love to get a picture with you. Do you come outside after to hang? Buddy, we're going to hang all night after. I don't think you understand how my shows work. <laughs> and for those of you that have... Uh, oh, thanks, love. For those of you that want to know where it is, we'll, we'll email you the locations of all these shows that week. Thank you, baby. How was that, Little Dippers? Great. It was awesome? Yeah. Want to say hi? Hi to the peeps? Hey, hey, peeps. Hey, look, it's Amy. I thought my buttons were undone for a second. <laughs> hi. <Right>. Bye. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll let you know where. We just don't put the location on the website just because, you know, why, why let SJWs just freak out like that? George, please Google Michael Dyson destroys JP. Some comedy. Uh, I don't know if I can watch that monkey. And I don't mean that in a racial way. I mean that in like, he literally is a tap dancing monkey. It's so disgusting to me that when you call someone a monkey, they assume it's racial. It's like a monkey to me. A trained monkey is just someone you throw peanuts at and they jump around and do a dance. All right, Dom, networking bear. Got to try this every day. Wrench life. Mod me too. Well, we have so many mods now that... You know, I want to take away a few people's wrenches, but I feel kind of guilty about it. But I think that people get over over censored sometimes. 
it's the Jews get a little get a little crazy with this censorship. But you know, they're paranoid. They're surrounded in a sea of, of Muslims that want to kill them. I get it. Hey Owen, is there a, a PDX bear? If not, can I be verified? Welcome, PDX Bear. Go to unbearableapp.com and make sure you're you're registered. Been editing videos since I was a kid. Can I be editor bear? Also, I live in Seattle, so if you end up moving here and need help, let me know. Yes, dude. I we are moving there. We're moving not to Seattle City. We're moving to the country up there. But um I told Amy we need like a few acres minimum. I'm not gonna do the city thing, but we are gonna be in the state of Washington. And yeah, I will need editing. Just offering a friendly hello from Angry Angry Welder Bear. Thank you, Angry Welder Bear. Mr. Nick Town. Is keeping bees considered farming or dating at purposes? We pollinate stuff. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I think uh, that does. Well, if you're white, gotta be white. Farmers only. <laughs> that's so funny, dude. I want to keep bees bad. I've been like on bee benders. What electric piano would you suggest for a noob? Cheap, 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 cheap. They're all they're all fine. Just get one with weighted keys, but just get the cheapest one you can find. They're fine. Brig Bear, I'm still painting that house in South Jersey. Can you sing a song about painting houses? Also, any updates on honey or salmon would be great. All right, sure. Painting houses in South Jersey. Wondering if there are any updates for me on salmon and honey. Well, the salmon are flowing good and the honey is flowing good but you should focus on your ladder yes you should cause if you're daydreaming about salmon and honey you're gonna fall down off that ladder and that will be pretty funny Tom in honor of Marx's bicentennial, I'm donating not enough to feed your family. Ah, that's great. Nick, Owen, look up Jean-Francois Garippi newest video. It's an alt-right hit piece on you. Oh, that's the guy who was talking about it yesterday. Yeah, I don't want I don't watch hit pieces on me. I honestly don't. As my mom said, I don't have enough room in my mind for, for garbage. And to be honest, I take that as a compliment. An alt-right hit piece on me is is fine. Yeah, that guy, like, I was, uh, ever since making that Sweet Palestine video on uh, Crowder, uh, some alt-right people have been coming at me. They're like, the Jews, you don't know what the Jews are. I'm like, dude, you guys are such fucking gay losers. They're such gay losers. Like, it, there's been a couple bears that have tried being bears and been, like, real clingy and psycho. And then, like... When they realize they're not like what the bear vibe is, they typically end up like that, where they're just like these creepy, methy weirdos that just are like, Jews. Dude, even Alex Jones will talk about how there isn't a Jewish conspiracy. Dude, he, he thinks frogs are gay, and frogs are kind of turning gay. Like, he's the guy who, like, he, even he will tell you guys that fucking... Jews just have an average IQ that's that's higher than most people, so they're going to end up in positions of power because they're all also physically very small. When you have people that are really smart but also physically somewhat weak, they pretty much spend eternity just just tricking people. <laughs> all right, our word. Spread the word to end the word. Google it. Ah. Self-censorship is the best vehicle to destroy individual thoughts. Of course it is. It breaks the culture's back. Really happy to be here live. Uh, work got rained out. Keep up the good work, Big Bear. Free speech for all. It's true. You decide. It's always on you. Do you limit your own speech? Self-limiting is where they get you. Nama Bear, my honey and I are, are taking my son to see when Portland can't wait. Here's for the road fund. Oh, you're the best. Yeah, I'm flying my whole family out for that. We're all flying, and now Walter doesn't fly for free. <laughs> Comics I'd love you to have on. Triple E, Theo Vaughn, Kirk Fox, and Tony Hinchcliffe. They all seem to not sip the Kool-Aid while bl uh, blending in with L.A. Yeah, that's a great great crew you just listed. Those guys are, are all good dudes. Sushi Bear, we need an unbearable illustrated. All Amy. 
an unbearable illustrated all Amy. You, that's a little that's a little aggressive, sushi bear. If you weren't a woman, I'd uh, I'd take a backhand to you. Westside Bear. It looked like the con side, the conservative side, had the proper representation of male and feminine in two liberal guys. Also, you should check out the show Westworld. Oh, I've seen Westworld. I got in a, a Twitter fight with the main guy from Westworld, uh, Jeffrey Wright. That was th- Those were some of the tweets that were used against me, that are still used against me when they screenshot to show how racist I am. Ugh. When Black Panther came out and they were saying, like, finally, a movie by black people for black people. And I was like, I just watched the trailer. There was no white people. Pass. I don't know who I should relate to. And Jeffrey Wright, that racist loser, was like, hey, it's about time that, that finally we, we, like, you guys got Captain America. But, and I started tweeting back at him, but I wouldn't stop the joke. I kept going like, but which one am I, though, if there's no whites? But I was tweeting to my people like, this fucking guy doesn't realize I'm joking. And there's nothing crazier than when you do sarcasm and people don't realize you're joking because they're actual racists. Like when I was a kid, I had Michael Jordan on my wall. I, the thought, the, the, the concept that black people can only look up to black people was started by Obama. Like that was a big push where it's like, finally, blacks can see a man with the same skin as them in the White House and they know anything is possible. It's like, Dude, Michael Jordan made me think I could dunk. I couldn't. But it's like, it, kids don't think like that. Kids don't look at at the color of someone and think like, oh, I just, I just got my Home Depot paint cards and it doesn't quite line up so they can't be my hero. That's, that's, that's the darkest type of racism. And of course, it's, it's this Obama's Kenyan crazy ass that comes up with that shit. I had never, like, that's old country racism. That's, like, the worst type. It's not, like, your common bigotry that's, like, kind of funny, where it's, like, oh, Asian driver. That's, like, Obama's most likely related to the guys that sold the slaves because he's not related to American slaves. He's related to the old Africans who um, their whole economy was based on rounding up their own people and selling them to the Portuguese and the Arabs. And then of course they would bring them either East or West. And let me tell you, if you're an African slave in 1500, you want to go West, not East. East, they they cut your dick and balls off and they put you in salt mines and they wouldn't let you have families. So say what you will about uh, American slavery, the Middle Eastern slavery, they wouldn't even let you have a family. They would just cut your dick and balls off. That's why there isn't any Africans in a, Saudi Arabia and these places that had way more slaves than America because they would they would cut their dicks and balls off immediately and a lot of them would bleed out, but they didn't care. They were that cheap. Nobody's asking the Shah for reparations. Um, I'm waiting after Nancy Pelosi's divine spark comment for her to come out that she's pro life. Oh no, of course she's not. She's an she's an asshole. I had a good talk with my dad because me and my dad started debating politics because he's a liberal. And uh, we we found some common ground. He thinks Nancy Pelosi's insane and Colbert is no longer funny. And shit like that allowed us to bond because other than that, like, you know, we have some disagreements to the point where he needed a nap. But the good news is he's not insane. Like, he still, he realizes that Colbert isn't funny. Like, he's like, oh, God, about Colbert. And he thinks Nancy Pelosi should have stepped down. And he thinks that late, that black lady in California is a fucking batshit loon. Um, and that's all I really need. Like, I'll, st- I'll, I'll, I'll just debate you and think you're wrong. But I won't think you're, like, evil if you, uh, you know, he thinks, he thinks abortion's uh, morally wrong. You know, so those are the type of liberals where I'm like, do you guys just not know what you've become, like what the party's become? Is that intentional? Are you not fucking Googling things? But we, we really, but you know, his list of his favorite presidents are my list of people that I, I wished got in car accidents. 
Community Bear. While you were researching the Fed, I sent a link to the Bear phone in the UN and the global agenda since inception. The education indoctrination begins. I got to check the Bear phone. I, uh, just because a couple bears that like sent me stuff and seemed really nice became complete psychos on me. I, I took a little breather from being super close to people I don't know, but you know, we'll figure something. I'll, I'll get back into the Bear phone soon. It's just, uh, I got a little freaked out. I'm real trusting. I'm, I'm a real trusting dude. Like, I always assume everyone's awesome. And then I'm like, oh, you're fucking crazy. So I have to figure out a way to figure out who's insane. All right, Bill. Canadian listening from Australia for a few months. Can I be Missionary Bear? As I am a full-time missionary with a Christian missions agency. Yeah, welcome, Missionary Bear. It's a great name. Oh, there was some... Uh, Shit, where were those? There was a Canadian or Australian bear I had to, I had to verify. Uh, I got to verify Artsy Fartsy Bear. Welcome, Artsy Fartsy Bear. Man, because it, it was a really nice super chat, too. Where is the Australian bear? I've been getting a lot of good love from Australia lately. Oh, it was so funny. Bob just sent me that. We had today we had four listeners in I in Iran and we're laughing that they're probably most likely dead now. Thank you, uh, notorious McPussy Grabber. <laughs> Joe, black comedians seem to always talk about white men having tiny dicks, which is mostly untrue. Do you think they are scared to say that about Asian men for PC reasons? No, they just want to emasculate white men. And yeah, it, it isn't true. I've played football with some blacks. And we'll cross with some blacks and, and showered up. And uh, I've, se- I've seen one black guy with a bigger dick than me that was legitimately much bigger. But most of them, I mean, girth and length, I was had way, a way bigger cock. And everyone kind of knew it, but no one really wanted to talk about it. They know what they're doing. <clears throat> Kiki Bear, going to see JBP tomorrow in Boston. Here's some money. Thank you. How do you how to use the Bear app? Well, just go to unbearableapp.com. I don't think we don't have a mobile version yet. Bear in mind, it's it's made in the free time of bears. It's a it's a passion project, but eventually we will have a mobile app. Never usually get to catch you live. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Too cool listening live. Thanks for the verification. YouTube screen name reads paranormal. Love it. Delicate Bear. Owen. Please read to yourself. Never. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, will you email me right now? Why didn't they laugh at gmail.com with your information? And I will, I will fix that. Yeah, we'll fix that. No problem. That's, that's literally a no problem. But email me. Uh, why didn't they laugh at gmail.com? Jonathan Cox. Hey, Owen, have you ever checked out PewDiePie? Uh, Yeah, he's awesome. I think he'd really help you understand internet humor and he aligns closer to you than you think. Yeah, PewDiePie's hilarious. He's hilarious. I love that guy. I don't need to understand internet humor. I I get it. Um, But I'm I'm a fan of his. I support that guy. That guy's a a truth teller. He's a little uh, fucking, you know, whites got to support the whites, man. You know what I mean? I'm just kidding. If you have to, if you want to understand Trump, look up Enneagram Type Eight, and he's so easy to understand. He's a protector in America is now under his protection. I don't know what that means. Enneagram Type Eight. It is time for him, her to come out about childbirth. I don't know what that means. Credible Stoner, don't worry, man. JF is a French Canadian. He won't hurt your image in any way. Oh, I don't care at all. I don't care about image. You think I give a fuck about image? Dude, I had like a strong image in Hollywood that I just torched because I thought they were a bunch of fucking losers. Do you think I'd give a fuck what some alt-right loser named Francois or some shit says about me? I think that I most likely, I bet he has followers that will probably watch some of my shit because they're like, oh, fuck this guy. And they'll agree more with me. I think there's a decent amount of alt-right guys that just hate the left identity, identity politics and they see like their culture shrinking and they don't want to be a minority 
and treated like a minority and they don't like the hypocrisy of like the I drink white tears and all this shit. And so the and they know that people are lying about like um like they won't address like uh Charles Murray and shit like that. And so they'll they'll get on board these dipshits to tell them they're super special because they're white and that they should live in a white ethno state and all this stuff. Because compared to the left's self like need for white self hatred, that would make sense. But it's still wrong. And then you listen to me and you're like, oh well, that's actually what I believe. That I just want people to to try really hard. And I want people to be judged based on if they're good people. And I don't want people to put me down because I'm white. And, uh, or, or, uh, not let me get a job or get into college because I'm white. And, and, and the fact that I, I'm proud of my German heritage doesn't mean I'm a Nazi or I hate Jews. Like shit like that. That isn't alt-right. Alt-right is another form of leftism and it's gay. And so I'm glad that guy talked shit about me because I, I, I know alt-right people that are now becoming less alt-right because they have another option, which is just being normal, like a normal dude where it's just like, <laughs> because if you limit yourself to just white people, you, you lose out on a ton of amazing people as well as, uh, you now have to prefer like a Yale girl, like a white girl from Yale with a rich dad who's like, Daddy, oh my God, someone was problematic in my class today. This comedian said, retard, let's ruin him, Daddy. Let's ruin him, Daddy. So now I have to like that bitch more than like a normal black dude that I've been friends with for decades. Like my probably my longest friend in the world right now since I was five. This dude, John Matika, we've been talking a lot lately, we've been texting a lot. He's a full-blooded American Indian from the Mohawk tribe. He's been my friend for 33 years. So I have to favor this stupid cunt from Yale because she has white skin over my boy, John. That's insanity. And so when these fucking alt-right retards Try and get their little their little loser cults going. And I'll tell you who a lot of these people are. A lot of them are people that tried doing something and they failed miserably at it. And so then they're, 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 they, they think that it's because of their skin. Like some of them have been drawn to me because I've talked shit. Like I'm a shit talker. Like I will talk shit to like people in power in Hollywood and I'll like talk shit, right? But what I'm saying is true. Like, there really is an issue with uh, child abuse in Hollywood and um, censorship and comedy is becoming uh, government propaganda. What I'm saying is not um, an excuse for my failings. In fact, I had accomplished as, as much as you can probably even want to possibly imagine you can accomplish as a comedian. Star of a sitcom, two Comedy Central specials, Leno, Fallon, National Headliner... Carnegie Hall, uh, you know, 12,000 seaters in Europe. Like, I've done all that shit. So it's not like I'm coming from this place of, if only I wasn't white, I could have done more. That's loser talk. That's bullshit. I'm coming from a place of power where I would give up the power in order to say what is reality. A lot of these alt-right people are like, you know, I started my own live stream and no one watched because I'm white. <laughs> it's like, no, bitch. It's because you, you, you're, you're not talented. There's no draw to you. There's no truth. There's no talent. And it's, it's exactly the shit that the left does with black shit. Where it's like, well, black people have been held back by, by angry white men like Jordan Peterson. No, a lot of black people can't read. Because they didn't have fucking dads. That's one reason why I've always thought that Nimmer is such a fucking superstar. Because that dude... He went to law school. He went to seminary school. He did four tours in, in the Marines. Like, he knows fucking everything. And that dude has climbed out of some shit. And he's had more disadvantages than I've had. I'll tell you that right now. I had, I had a very secure and tight and nurturing family growing up. And that made me learning a lot easier. And that dude, I asked him about shit. Like, I texted him like, 
yo, what's up with the Fed? And he'll just immediately know tons about everything. And so I always viewed privilege as having a secure, like my boy John, you know, he, he was raised by his grandfather who ended up going back to the, um, the, uh, the reservation. You know, my dad had to help him not go to, go to jail a few times. And it wasn't because he was a bad kid. It's because he didn't have anyone protecting him. And that is where, that is where there's privilege and it's not racial. It's not. As much as people want to make it seem that way, it's not. And people want to make it seem racial because they don't want to address actual issues because people with power don't want other people competing with them. If we actually said what is true, which is a strong nuclear family, a moral code, a a strong work ethic, you know, home education, reading original documents, books, If you give students this, if you give young kids this, if you give kids a stay-at-home mom, they'll rise. And then the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts and the J.P. Morgans and all these people, they now have a lot more competition. There's a reason that Andrew Carnegie started the fucking teachers union and gave all these organs to all these churches. He was an atheist. He didn't do it to get closer to God. He He did it to get closer to the flock. And then they start manipulating. And then they start trying to keep people down. And they they do try to keep people down. They try to keep kids broken. P- kids in school in the prime of their lives. 18 to 22, right? Why do you think Rockefeller wanted free education for all? 18 to 22, you keep young men off the, off the, uh, the, the, the ability to compete against these tycoons. Against these fucking... And, and a lot of these people would win. And then you have them by 22. They've now been in school since they were five. They're, they've been in school more than they've been with their parents or their friends or in nature or uh, tinkering in their garage. And, and they're just, now they're just, it's so much easier to control them. They also think in terms of hourly wage, not in terms of systems. You know, it's like, how much do I make an hour? No, that's not how Vanderbilt thought or Rockefeller or Carnegie. None of these people went to college. You know, Bill Gates didn't finish college. Steve Jobs didn't finish college. Um, Mark Zuckerberg didn't finish college. There's a reason that none of them finished college because by 19, they're like, fuck college. College is trying to make me a a high level worker. They're trying to make you a $400,000 a year useful idiot, which is wealthy. $400,000 a year is wealthy, but it's still hourly. You're still someone's bitch. There's a difference between rich and wealth. Chris Rock talked about that. There's... There's Shaq, and then there's the dude who owns Shaq. Who's like, yeah, those rims keep spinning, nigga. Those rims keep spinning, nigga. That shit. All right. Just saw a Missionary Bear in the app and thought it'd be fun to have a parody of the your rhythmic song, Missionary Man, but with Missionary Bear. That's hilarious. Uh, it's personality. Enneagram types like Meyer Briggs. Interesting. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord, your God, he is the one who goes with you. He is not, he will not leave you nor forsake you. Thanks for all you, thanks for all that you do, Big Bear. That's, that's awesome, bud. Thank you for that. Um, Oh yeah. And also French Canadians are total pussies. So tell that to that French guy. Total pussy. Like they're like, ooh la la, ooh la la, je suis le plus, je suis le plus de bleu. Uh, Pamplemus, uh, Pamplemus, oh, je, je voudrais le Pamplemus. Hi from Australia, I'm a Musso. My bands are the Methamphetiquines <laughs> and James Dillon and the Sad Men. <laughs> so can I be Meth Bear or Sad Bear? Yeah, be, uh, be Meth Bear. P.S. Love the piano lesson the other day. Thanks, Meth Bear. Uh, Tristan, met you at the Brea show and had a great time. You said I look like the Mexican that owned the, the natives. Therefore, I'd like to be verified as Conquista Bear. That's a great name. Welcome, Conquista Bear. Love your stuff, Owen. Keep on fighting. Hell yeah. Um, Delev just said, wow, a lot of love for the Jews in the chat today. Well, the Jews are very lovable people if you really get to know them. Not all. Just like no, no group is all one thing. That's... It's why I'm not alt-right. Because there's a lot of whites I fucking can't stand. Oh, this one comic in a wheelchair was just talking shit. You guys want to hear something funny? All right, give me one second. (laughs) This wheelchair. Wheelchair comic. 
All his bits are probably about being in a wheelchair. It's like, how do you make fun of a man in a wheelchair? Because I don't pity him. And he talks shit first. All right, so I did this uh, video on Facebook. I Well, it's on my special. It's, on, it's my pinned video on Facebook. It's done really well. Hang on, it's loading. Give me a second, guys. Give me a second. Wheelchair comic. All right, it's been, it's been shared like 130 times. 750 likes. Pretty good. All right, so, oh, he might have replied. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, he replied. Good for him. All right, let's, let's all just look. Let's all read this together. Because it's about Brea. And so I know a lot of you guys can probably um, uh, relate to, you guys can have my back that Brea was, was really packed. Because Brea, I got an email from the booker months before that there wasn't going to be, uh, I don't know, a Saturday late show. Because they had some shit, they moved. They moved uh, the showroom, right? So, hang on. Let me just set this up real quick. So this guy Joe Ural said, "Didn't your second show at Brea Improv get canceled due to low ticket sales? I'm only five years in, and I was able to get the room capacity when I filmed my half hour in Orange County last month. Um, no, my my show is all sold out there. There was one that that wasn't sold out. I believe it was on a Thursday, but." Uh, for anyone that's been to any of my shows lately, the, the ticket sales is never, never an issue, Joe. So I wrote, no, I sold out all the shows. The second show was canceled months earlier due to a fundraiser. I filmed my first half hour with Comedy Central, by the way. Where will yours be shown? I always, like, I always just think that's funny. And then I did a little research on him, and he's, um, he's a wheelchair-bound comedian. And so all of his, you know, he's all about everything's problematic, and he's a total, you know, just loser. So I wrote, the wheelchair is a sweet prop. Instead of get her done, you should say, wheels go round. I'm dead serious, it would kill. And then this is his, I haven't read this yet, but we can read it together. Calling my wheelchair a prop is an example of your career stagnation. Also, I'd rather be a comedian in a wheelchair than the third rate piano comedian. Aimlessly screaming racial slurs makes you more of a prop comedian than me in a wheelchair I have to use. What should I write? I'm going to go in the, in the chat. Tell me what I should write. What should I write? Should I call him, huh? Should I just write nigger? <laughs> Hang on. What do you guys think? What would be the funny, what would be a funny comeback? Tell me what the funny comeback is, guys. Um, I'm not racist. You're just stupid. No, but come on. We can do something better than that. JF tried to impregnate and marry a 19-year-old girl with autism to get American citizenship. Oh, the alt-right guy? Yeah, he's horrifying. Wheels are gay. That's a good one. To have, I was giving Fack or whatever a chance to become more vile. He deaf delivered. Cool your wheels, bro. Oh, cool your wheels, bro is good. Uh, d don't get up in arms about it. That's funny. I'm going to do a bunch of them. Uh, okay, make wheelchair puns. Oh, I'm going to do a lot. You'll be bigger man and walk away. No, I'm a comedian. I make jokes. No, bigger men that walk away aren't comedians. Like, my whole job is to not walk away. This isn't bad. This isn't an act of ego or anything. This is literally my job. <laughs> oh, this is great. I'm just going to do a ton of puns all in a row. This will be fun. My career is up and running. Okay, that's one. What else do you guys have? Your jokes have no legs. I'm going to take a stand over this. Hang on. Your jokes have no legs. I'm, ta I'm taking a stand over this. Okay. Tell him, tell, tell him to be the, bi just be the bigger man and walk away. Oh, I see what you're saying. Just be the bigger man and walk away. 
Um, stand up and say that to my face. Oh, take a break. Taking chances sometimes cost you a leg and a leg. Tell him to be the bigger man and walk away. Oh, that's funny. Uh, sounds like your career has hit the skids. Uh, start by saying you might want to sit for this. <laughs> His comeback was real funny. I'm, I'm definitely closing on that. Um, you need to slow your roll, bro. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. Your career is on the skids. I'm wheelie. Wheelie. Serious. Um. What else we got here? You're a uh, sit-down comedian. Tell him to stop trying to spin this. Yeah. Stop trying to spin this story. I'm a stand-up comedian who gets standing ovations. Feet, foot. I'm a, I'm a foot soldier. You spoke. You spoke enough already. The rubber has hit the road. Uh, put your best foot forward. Put your best foot forward and make your jokes accessible to everyone. I'm getting ramped up. Wheel then, uh, handicapped. Keep your joke book handy. When you and and stop giving me your sitting bull baloney. Your sitting bull. Really nice talking to you. Now roll away. My career is up and running. Your jokes have no legs. I'm taking a stand over this. Just be the bigger man and walk away. Slow your roll, bro. Pump the brakes. Your career is on the skids. I'm wheelie, wheelie serious. Stop trying to spin this story. I'm a stand-up comedian who gets standing ovations. You spoke enough already. The rubber has hit the road. Put your best foot forward and make your jokes accessible to everyone. I'm getting ramped up. Keep your joke book handy and stop giving me your sitting bull. Wheelie, nice talking to you. Now roll away. I mean, I'm real proud of that. I mean, uh, I really hit a spinal cord. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to show you guys what I just wrote. It's, it's probably the best work I've ever, I've ever done. And here it is. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't have done it without the unbearables. I couldn't have done it without the, uh, 
the shit talking brain trust. I mean, that's just, that's just pure glory. I will die a legend. He sounds wheelie jealous. His comeback has wheel funny. He's a pretty bad stand-up comic. He stepped into the bear den and got bit. I mean, that's so funny. If I was just reading comments and I just read that, I would just start like just pissing on my own dick. All right, I gotta, um, let's see Wayward Son. He deleted his comment. Ah, doesn't matter. I'm not here to embarrass him. I was just here to give him a, uh, just give him a little uh, reality check about joke writing. Yeah, don't step into the lion's den, little man. Just wheel off. Just roll out, roll out, roll out, roll away. He's like a roll away couch. This chat is hilarious, ruthless, but funny as hell. He started it. If I if I had um I mean he has a leg up on me. Did Joe Biden ask him to stand and be recognized? <laughs> is his rollout for comedy Jump by Van Halen? Oh, I should play Jump by Van Halen. Or is it I'd roll 5,000 miles? Oh, that's hilarious. All right, I gotta do. If I could walk 500 miles and a... When I wake, wake up, wake up, well, you know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who sits in a chair for life. When I go out, Yes, you know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man Who asks if there's a ramp If I get drunk Well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man Who pisses in his pants And if I have her Yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man Who's wheeling with you but I would roll 500 miles and I, I would roll 500 more Just to be the man who rolls a thousand miles and the ball down at your door in a wheelchair What's another walking song? Uh, walking, walking, see Christopher Walken? Owen, watch out. You're going to be the first target of the suede denim secret police. Papa Wheelie. Just mean and hilarious. It's not mean. He's he, like the shit he said to me was was toxic and disgusting. What he said to me, and this was right next to someone told me that they were going to like, someone said, um, oh, sweet. Someone uh, pasted our, our entire conversation so he can't delete it. I love that shit. Yeah, try and delete your bullshit. Thank you, Jason. Someone said, the world is going to hate your white children. Can't wait until they're attacked in the streets. That's what someone said right next to this guy. Like, I get attacked, like, all the time in a degree that I don't think most people um, can comprehend. Like, just, and that's public. You got to see the private ones. Anyway. Oh, so this dude deleted it, Oh, these people. His demographic is ignorant, racist, white people. To them, this is funny. Well, what about all the blacks and the and the everyone else that uh, that thought it was real funny? Are they they just hate themselves? You stupid bitch. I wrote, said the ignorant, racist white person that doesn't realize she's projecting. And then Courtney said, probably the funniest thing you've ever said. Uh, and then Aaron Legend says, it's funny because he's taking the piss out of everybody. Or should we only stick to talking shit about white people since it's become socially acceptable to do so? And I wrote to him, she's literally a racist, so she doesn't believe in racial comedic equality. That's the funny part. I'm dead serious. She's a racist. Um, so, oh, yeah. No, I get a lot of support, though. You've become my favorite comedian since all this shit blew up on the left. I love that you haven't caved. Keep up the hilarity. 
But then this this guy wheels into my life. Oh, like like this dumb bitch Janice, this black bitch, writes, uh, Indians are from India and don't live in reservations. Native Americans live in reservations. I wrote, I the, someone else wrote, <laughs> um, how about first peoples, even though they may not have been first? And yes, even American Indians say they are Indian or just go by tribal affiliation. And by the way, not all Indians live on reservations. <laughs> Stupid bitch says, Larry, Indian people from India do not live on reservations at all. That was my point. I know not all Native Americans live on reservations. It's just so fucking dumb. That's all these people care about anymore. All they care about is what race are you? Who do you fuck? So that his first thing, he just attacks me that I don't get, uh, I don't, I don't sell enough tickets. Dude. Yeah. Guys spread this shit. It's right on, it's right on my Facebook. It's hilarious. Oh, Dom just said, fantastic. Sweet. A running gag. Thanks for proving your lack of originality. Says Joe. Um, you're really persistent. I'd give an arm and a leg to see your show. I bet you would too, but you don't have any legs that work, huh? <laughs> All right. Do you guys know the video that, that, that that's referring to? I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. And I'll plug my own special if you guys want to see it. All right, where is it? Where is it, Owen? Hey, Owen. Hello, Owen. Size. Size. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, and oh no. You're saying mean things. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's real bad why people are doing this, too. It's, it's to destroy Western civilization, but I, I guess... People have a lot more to worry about, huh? You fucking, you fucking dickheads. All right, what is this? What is this? Uh, where is it? Uh, racism song. I'll just look it up. Racism song. Yes, a hog wouldn't walk. How dare me. 500 miles in a hour. The fuck is it? Every day, so you get a bunch of indoor cats working out in their front. Yo. Here we go. Don't say midget. It hurts them. They prefer to be called. Now right, we get to the joke. I'm going to play it for you guys. All right, so. This is the joke that this stupid crippled retard was making fun of. He said, I wouldn't walk 500. By the way, I just gave him more press than he's ever gotten in his life. The only press he gets is when, when groups are like, we must support the cripple. We must support him. Look at him on stage just trying. We have to support him because he's wheelie, wheelie funny. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut him down because what he's doing is bullying. No, it's not bullying. If, if you don't, if you don't treat people in wheelchairs like normal men, they want to kill themselves. That's so much worse. Like if, if someone in a wheelchair comes up to me and calls my wife a whore or that I suck at my job or like that my, they're going to kill my kids or something. If I then just pat him on the head and go, well, it's brave of you to even try to talk. That's crazy. All right. So this is the joke. This is called, this is called the racism song. Cause I think. I think there's a lot of uh, misunderstandings about about what is racist because it's not about race, it's about culture. Here we go. It's called the racism song. <laughs> Black dudes with more than one pit bull scare the shit out of me. But a black guy with a cell phone on his belt, I trust. That's it. Give me any race, I'll do it. Anybody? Indian? Indians after one beer on a reservation scare the shit out of me. <laughs> but an Indian that's on my lacrosse team in 93, I trust. <laughs> Give me another, anybody, any Mexicans? 
Mexicans working out in their front yard scare the shit out of me. But a Mexican that says, La Luna, I trust. <laughs> Give me another one. Hit me, hit me. Huh? What? North, North Korean? <laughs> Only one North Korean scares the shit out of me. <laughs> And if his super cuts hairdresser slices his throat, I'll trust him. He goes in there, he's like, make me look like a man's penis head. All right, give me another race. Huh, who? Armenians? <laughs> Peter. Arna Armenians that are within 100 yards of a Turkish person scare the shit out of me. But an Armenian that is selling me a Mercedes, I trust. You're going to want this one, buddy. <laughs> Give me another one. What? Jews? Jewish people that are in charge of the Federal Reserve scare the shit out of me. But a Jew named Ben Shapiro, I trust. <laughs> Give me another one. Japanese? Ever since 45, none of them scare the shit out of me. <laughs> They're like, we are just going to watch cartoon. Bye. Give me another one. Who? Kenyans? Kenyans from that movie, The Gods Must Be Crazy, who don't have that Coke bottle scare. I don't know. I don't know how it is. Kenyans that can't run a marathon under two hours fucking scare the shit out of me. <laughs> but a Kenyan that can run it in 150, I trust. Give me a, one more. Russians. Russians. Scare the shit out of me. Russians are the toughest people on the planet, man. You know, I'm always scared of Muslims on uh, public transportation. You know, you see a sweaty Muslim. <laughs> All right, we'll just end it. You'll see a sweaty Muslim. If you want to get that special, go to hugepianist.com slash specials. You can also get Eric Nimmer's new special, Send It. You can also get my last special, Feed the Bear. All right. Good times. Run as fast as you can. All right. We got some more Super Chats, and I'm going to call it a day. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Bethy. Oh, thanks. Connie and Bear wants you to move image so song can be clipped. I think I've... I, I don't know about that one. Will I talk to JF? No, the guy talking shit about me? No chance ever. Never. Never in a million years. That guy's off my radar. I don't react well to people just talking shit. It's like that's how people, a lot of people are raised really poorly where their, their family, they show affection by abuse. Not me. <laughs> if someone is like, oh, dude, someone just did a hit piece on you. Will you have them on your uh, page? I'm like, oh, so a uh, 100,000 people can hear them? No. Fuck that guy. The dude sent me a friend request on Facebook. Then he deleted his Facebook. Who? The wheelie guy? JF is trouble. I think he's has delusions. Hit the like, Bears. Thank you, Boulder Bear. Yeah, hit the like button. Let's spread this stuff. JF is a soci sociopathic weirdo. Yeah, and I've had some running with, with some sociopaths lately. And, uh... Hey, dude, this guy just punched you in the balls. Will you buy him a beer? Doesn't make sense. I know, but there's a lot of people who do function that way. Hey, Budweiser uh, Bear here. How do I get verified? Welcome, Budweiser Bear. Now go to unbearableapp.com and make it official. Hot Wheels. Social media is fucked. Well, you were trying to make... Sushi Bear, you were trying to make a, a, a calendar out of my wife. I'm just kidding. No, social media isn't fucked. It just, uh, it just... People have to understand how it works better, I think. Oh, uh, all right, I have six more minutes. Owen, do you think the left will progressively tighten their stranglehold of censorship on the major media platforms, or will they never will they ever dial it back? They'll never dial it back. It's our job to make something new, and I'm doing my damn disguise every day. And, and you guys being here is means the world. You guys are fighting it just by being here. So that's it. It's kind of like what we're talking about with academia. Like you you can't win at their game. Like I'm not trying to be on Comedy Central anymore. I've done it. I've done it. I'm not trying to be on Netflix. Netflix sucks now. Try and watch shows on Netflix. Every one of them is like Hitler's 
bad. And the next one is like, why a 13 year old should kill himself. And here is five new comedy specials from minority groups, angry at whites. Would you mind reading my PayPal before you go? Of course, of course, Jeremy, come on. Netflix does blow it out, it sucks. It used to be awesome too. It used to be awesome. Yeah, I don't get why people are like, oh, he's, he's doing a hit piece on you. Talk to him. It's like, of course not, dude. That guy sounds like terrible. Like, that's why I sometimes I have a hard time even writing back to some people. Because I'm like, does this person want to kill me? I get a lot of hate. It's crazy. All right, let me read these. Oh, Frederick Fredericton. <clears throat> Oh, and thanks to everyone who super chatted. It means everything. To help narrow down your pool of proofreaders, you should focus on those that have professional experience. That would not include me. So this advice eliminates me from the pool. Whatever you decide, I'm sure it'll be an awesome book. Thank you, Frederick Fredrickson. Dave. I noticed during your last appearance that Crowder is still using your Twitter handle in their overlay. Yeah, but that makes it even funnier because it says uh, banned by Twitter when you look at me up. Big Bear, my computer doesn't agree with live stream, so sorry if I'm saying this after you said no more for the day. I'm pretty sure I've been recommended before, but I want to bring up Jonathan Pagu's work. He's a French-Canadian Orthodox icon carver who gives you YouTube lectures on traditional Christian symbolism and interprets movies with symbolic... Oh, I'd love to talk to that guy. If anyone knows, he, he messaged me on, on Twitter, but obviously I can't find him on Twitter these days because I don't have Twitter these days. But I'd love to talk to that guy, even, even though he is French-Canadian. I'll look past that. Justin, I drew a picture of, of um, I drew a picture of what's your email again. Also, get in touch with Coder Bear and the dev team is great. Love you, Big Bear. Keep it up. Why didn't they laugh at gmail.com? Hit me up. And yes, Coder Bear and the team is great. Mike. Tubby Bear here. You've mentioned many times you were blood relatives of Clark from Lewis and Clark. I grew up in Montana, one of the few places in the country where traces of original Americana still exist. Manifest destiny is hardwired into the earth there, literally, with mining and farming, logging, ranching. One of my early mentor figures used to be a horse logger back in the 60s when bitch hips were actually a virtue. That's hilarious. Montana, <laughs> that's, a, that's an old reference. You know that I have uh, insecurities with my bitch hips. Montana is where Lewis and Clark discovered the headwaters of the Missouri River. Much of the inland western United States is almost unchanged from the time of white privileged homesteads and those savage red-skinned Indian powwows. That's a smoke signal to the PC trolls listening. Native Americans were what we would define as OG American racists and stole land from each other and were constantly at war with each other before they even saw a white man. It's true. But here's the key. They wouldn't define it as racist. It was tribal survival. Also true. Racism, I'm, I, I honestly think it's, it's defined by like Marxists. All right. It's a long one. It's well written, but he, he uh, Rogan often talks about the book Tribe by Sebastian Younger. Yeah, great book. There's way more to why we are the way we are than we ever have time to know. As history enthusiasts, it's an honor to have been born in a small town America, America because I grew up 500 miles from a city. I feel connected to our country in a way that most millennials and Snapchat generation bandwagon atheists can't. Kids don't even read books anymore. How are they protesting college campuses? And talking down to adults when they don't even know anything. I think you just answered the question. Because they don't know anything. Gavin McGinnis combats this with millennial explaining. Hilarious. Yes, there are horrible things in the past and present where people got it wrong. But it's not the social media generation's job to fix it. I think we have to have a sense of humor about who we are always. Or else the endless conflict from people who aren't even here anymore will continue. What the bears are doing is literally human evolution. Agreed. You got to also understand, um, slavery used to be politically correct. Uh, slavery used to be progressive. I'm glad slavery happened. If it wasn't, we never would have gotten past genocide. Back in the day, when an army won, they killed everyone. Like, when Genghis Khan took a place, everyone died. You just, you killed everyone. You didn't, slavery used to be progressive, where some, like, hippie was like, hey, guys. Let's all just take the people and not kill them and use them for work. And, and everyone's like, listen to the queer over here that doesn't want to kill his 10 guys. That's where decimate comes from. Decimal, decimate, you kill 10 dudes. Every soldier was responsible for killing 10. Decimate, that's why he decimates. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, right? So, uh, 
slavery had to happen before you could not have slavery or else you would just keep killing every man, woman, and child. from Because when you beat a place, you either have to stay forever or kill everyone. We can see that now with the military. Every war we've won, we had to stay or you have to kill everyone. So that's why we're still in Germany and Japan and all these places. But thank you for that, Mike. Oh, and also don't forget, email unbearablenewsnetwork at gmail.com videos saying why you hate mainstream media or why you don't trust the media because we're doing a montage so you say i don't trust the media because blah 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 make it real like why don't you trust the media because unbearable news network unn um we're gonna be media so wrong that we're right thank you for that mike that was very nice jeremy hey owen i know you turned the bear phone off no i'm back on, i'm gonna be big on the bear phone and because I really do appreciate the people that have subscribed, I don't want to be a buzzkill and not respond to people who literally keep the lights on in this show. But at the same time, I was getting harassed on the bare phone by some bad, bad dudes. Just methy, weird guys. I, it's, it's, it's really weird when someone would pay money just to, like, talk shit. It's so funny to me. Like, why don't these people just put their effort into, like, starting their own thing? Like a business, start a family work mow the fucking lawn all right and, and you're becoming so popular you can't even get to all your paypal chats but maybe you'll get to this one of course i will dude fyi you can blog numbers if people are creeping you out oh that's cool read the next sentence yourself okay all right, i'll read this after that if you if you uh wrote all right you wrote you wrote me a song that's awesome we uh here are the lyrics if you can't find the email. All right, let me, uh, let me, let me just, because I got to go because it's one. And if I go over two hours, it gets usually, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I, I get that for next time. All right, final chat. Field of Bears here. Calling MS-13 animals is an insult to animals. That's a great way to put it. Field of Bears gives me awesome advice sometimes. He's a really good dude. Follow Field of Bears on Twitter, at Field O Bears. Follow at Owen Comedy on Twitter. Delev runs that. Follow the Clips channel, Own Benjamin Clips on YouTube. Uh, that's growing. And wherever else, I don't really, I can't remember. I think Bellevue is sold out. If not, there's under five tickets left. It's, it's a big place, dude. We sold a lot despite that wheelchair guy thinking that we don't sell tickets. Uh, HugePianist.com and then Richland, Washington. And then uh, Portland also almost sold out. I, I'm telling you, it does sell out. Like, this has happened a lot in the past where the week of people are like, hey, I want to come, and, and you can't, there's no more tickets. So just please remember that, um, like, week of shows, typically there's no way of getting tickets for shows. So, um, yeah. All right, let me read the last of these super chats. Owen is awesome. Changed my mind. Um, Owen uh, eats a lot of ice cream before bed sometimes and can't sleep properly. That's been my thing lately. Lately, I've because pregnant wife. I haven't been gaining weight though because I've been doing a lot of uh, playing with Walter and a lot of yard work and a lot of tree work. But I've been uh, I've been having ice cream before bed and I just uh, I haven't been able to sleep well because of the fucking sugar. It's like you get warm. It's the worst. Excuse for ice cream? Not. It, 30 week pregnant ladies can really get you going with ice cream. Try goat milk ice cream. Oh, well, we're getting goats when we move. Hit the like button and share, or you're a racist. Yeah, hit the like button and share this, or else you think 9 11 was awesome, and you think that wasabi. Islam is like great and you think it's the best for the world. <clears throat> like hit the like button and share or you think goats are wicked sexy and you want to bang them. Hit and feel free to write more of these in, in the chat guys. Hit, uh, hit, the, hit the like button and share this or you think uh, you think it's totally cool that like Hollywood thinks that little kids are like attractive. A wheelchair guy did do 9-11. Hit the like button and share it, or you think, oh, I'm going to hit up, oh, someone just gave me, uh, 
Pegu's email. Let me copy this. Yeah, because that guy sounds amazing. And he was really nice to me in the in the DMs. Hit the like button and share or you want to date Harvey Weinstein. Hit the like button and share or... Uh, or you think Justin Trudeau is intelligent. <laughs> That's a great one. That just got a bunch of likes and shares. Hit the like button and share you think Justin Trudeau is awesome. Hit the like button and share or you think the wheelchair guy should knock up your mom. Hit the like button and share um, or not. Internet points for you. Oh, no, no. Hit the like button and share this or you think socialism is as good as sex. Good one, Kodiak Bear. Hit the like button and share or you want to be Trudeau's sauna buddy. Oh, that's a good one. Hit the like button and share or you think little kids are attractive. <laughs> Hit the like button and share or light your pubes on fire from Iceman. Hit the like button and share or or I'm stealing your bike. Hit the like button and share is the incel thing. Oh, not hitting the like button and sharing is the incel thing to do. That's a good one. Hit the like button and share or you want to have sex with RuPaul. Eesh, good one. Hit the like button and share or you secretly are in love with David Hogg. Hit the like button and share or you think the Clinton Foundation is an honest and respectful organization. <laughs> good one, Gangs Bear. Hit the like button and share it from this is from Mr. Nick Down. Or Trudeau will steal your dad from your mom. That's a good point. Hit the like button and share, spelled C-H-E-R. That's a really good one. Hit the like button and share. You won't. Good one. That's good reverse, Iceman. Hit the like button and share, or you think pedos pedosexual is a real orientation. Good one. Hit the like button and share, or Kanye won't like the way you think. That's funny. Do wheelchair guys' kids pop and... Uh, Pop out rocking 40 rim, uh, rims. It's pretty funny. Hit the like button and share or Islam is a race. That's funny. Hit the, all right, I got to go. Hit the like button and share or you think First Amendment is outdated. Hit the like button and share or your wheels will pop off. Hit the like button and share or shave your ass and walk backwards. Hit the like button and share or you're on the wrong side of history. That's hilarious. Or admit you're attracted to your sister from Liberty Bear. Hit the like button and share or you're problematic. Dude, you guys are fucking funny as hell. Hit the like button and share if you, uh, hit the like button and share if you want to meet Dyson. No, that works against us, guys. Hit the like button and share or Hillary wins. It's time to hit the button and to share. Hit the like button and share your pussy. That's mine. Okay, Mama Bear equals great mom, great advice, Starbucks guy. Please verify Danny Bear. Welcome, Danny Bear, and thanks for introducing us to Nimmer. Hell yeah! Send bears on over there to buy. Great specials. Hugs to the family. Yeah, follow Eric Nimmer on YouTube, and also you can buy a special at hugepianist.com slash specials. You can also get my specials. Marcus, thank you for your humor in these times. Your shows and videos have helped in my life. You have given me the tools to just make fun of everything again. You remind me of a young George Carlin. Can I be Waffles Bear? Welcome, Waffles Bear. And hit the like button and share, or else I, uh, I don't do what you just said. Owen, did you see... He said that Amy guilt tripped you into marriage with a pregnancy. I lit him up. Who said that? Oh, well, that's not even a good insult. I've, I've been with Amy for six years. Cripple comedians who blame others for what? That, that's the funniest thing is, uh, is uh, when people know that much about you that hate you. It's because they're envious. Like that guy just sees me walking around and he just is like, Ur. Cripple comedians who blame others for lack of success scare the shit out of me. But a self-deprecating crippled retard I trust. 100%. Owen is awesome. Changing my mind. All right, you guys rule. And uh, it's been a blast. I will see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place. 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, YouTube, Vimeo, uh, uh, Twitch, Unbearable Comedy on Twitch. I think, uh, yeah. And make sure you like and share. Comment. Tell me what you think about it. I read the comments. And uh, be good to each other. And send in videos to unbearablenewsnetwork at gmail.com saying why you do not trust the, the media and this has been a blast i really enjoyed today i love you guys be good be good uh and hit the like button and share or else you want justin trudeau to finger your butt